The union between you and Ayan, which led to two of those five children you have, uh, was a second marriage. And as I understand it, you met at the time 100. You were both being inducted as two of the world's most influential people. There was a write-up about it at the time in the Daily Mail. And I love this quote. A friend of Ms. Hersey Ali said, I think that's where they met for the first time. In all the years I've known Ayan, she's never had a boyfriend. She's gorgeous. But with a fatwa, it's tricky to find guys. <laughs> Ayan, we laugh. But Ayan remains with a fatwa on her, a fatwa on her from the Muslim Brotherhood, from which she ultimately fled. She was now, you know, famously or infamously working on this film that got its director, Theo Van Gogh, killed, shot um, because it was critical of Islam. And uh, on his chest was pinned a fatwa on Ayan, a, a threat on Ayan's life, a commitment to kill Ayan. And she has had to live with that every day thereafter. I mean, she's the, the bravest, most courageous woman I know. And you, you know, I can see the woman's point who gave this quote to, to Daily Mail. You walk into this just like this powerhouse of a woman. I mean, I can imagine you're bowled over by meeting the Ayan Hirsi Ali. But then it's a little complicated. <laughs> well, honey, I've got something to tell you. Well, uh, remember, don't believe everything you read in the Daily Mail. Uh, actually, <laughs> we 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 were on a date when we went to the Time 100 dinner. We, we'd met wow. uh, already at a, a much more obscure, but I think uh, cooler event, which was the... Uh, the the emergency conference of the Mont Pelerin Society at the time of the financial crisis. The Mont Pelerin oh Society, famously, a gathering of uh, of mostly Chicago free market economists, and we'd both <laughs> been invited to attend. And indeed, I Hot. gave a speech about why the financial crisis shouldn't be blamed on free markets, and uh, and that was when <laughs> when I was introduced to Ayan. I I knew of very course, sexy. Well, it, it's certainly nerdy, isn't it? Um, and and uh, and she wasn't wearing that blue dress either. Uh, but but I knew, of course, who she was uh, when a lovely Australian man named Greg Lindsay uh, introduced us. He was the unlikely Cupid. By the way, if you've ever read War and Peace, the moment when Pierre sees Natasha, everything stops. Uh, that's what the French called a coup de foudre. It happened to me then. So I mm. knew very much uh, that she was under threat. And and indeed, these threats don't have expiry dates. Uh, yeah. uh, there's no statute of limitations. And we have to accept that there are people uh, out there uh, who uh, would regard killing my wife as she's an apostate and somebody who's been highly critical of, of Islam and particularly political Islam. They would regard it as a a, a, a holy act. I mean, we have to live with that. Uh, the fact that Salman Rushdie was attacked last year, uh, yeah. when he clearly felt it kind of was over, came as a huge blow, I think, to Ayan, uh, who was deeply upset by the attack on Salman, whom, whom we know. I suppose I think about it this way. First of all, terrorism is designed to inspire fear. And is its purpose. Um, and I grew up uh, in a culture uh, which is highly resistant uh, to accepting fear. Uh, my grandfathers fought in the world wars. The Scots pride themselves in their fearlessness. And I uh, have never been afraid of these people because I despise them. I have utter contempt for them and I don't fear them. Uh, and indeed, I'd already made the choice to move to the United States just after 9-11 uh, because actually 9-11 prevented me from giving a lecture at New York University. Uh, it was supposed to happen the next day. I never flew. And it was shortly after that that I decided to leave Oxford, take a job at New York University. So before I met Ayan, I think I'd already made, made it clear uh, that I was going to march towards rather than away from the gunfire. And it, my grandfathers had to fight uh, at great cost uh, to themselves. Uh, they didn't uh, pay the ultimate price, but my grandfather was very badly uh, injured in World War One, and, and my mother's father suffered uh, significant health uh, damage in World War II fighting the Japanese. I haven't been asked to do anything as difficult as that. My war is a small war. Uh, it takes place uh, uh, here, and I just have to keep my wife safe uh, uh, and happy uh, and make sure that she lives a long life, because that will be the ultimate victory over all those cowards who threatened her over the years. That's my war, mm. and it's a much easier one than my granddad had to fight. 
Oh my goodness. And but like those wars, well worth the fight. You know, that's so. probably on some level what attracted her to you, you know, that that Scottish background, that fighter background, and the feeling that this person will help protect me. I'm sure as strong and brave as Ion is, there's got to be a fear factor for even for her, knowing that these very effective killers are out there thinking about her, wanting to target her. Look, I think my wife's extremely uh, brave and good at putting up a brave uh, face, but I would not be uh, doing justice to this interview if I made it sound as if it was all okay, because the mental uh, stress of being threatened uh, has taken a heavy toll, uh, a very heavy toll on my wife's well-being, happiness. Uh, it's been a, a, a struggle, much harder than I had foreseen. I, I thought the challenge would be just making sure that the bad guys uh, couldn't get close. But the real challenge when you're facing terrorist threats like this is actually making sure that that your uh, your spouse's mental health uh, is okay. Because that that's mm. really what the terrorists are trying to do. It's not just about threats and objective security. The thing that really turns out to matter in life is is the subjective security, and that that terrorism is designed to erode. And it's it's been a much bigger challenge than I I foresaw. One one mm-hmm. that we are overcoming, but not one that we should understate. When she came out with her book, uh, she came to Fox News, and I gave I interviewed her. I think I was her first interview on that. And it was shocking to me, the amount of security back then, this would have been 2013, 2014, I can't remember the year, that she had to travel with. I mean, it, and even, you know, I've visited her privately since then, and it's still, like, she still has to live like this because of these lunatics who are so delusioned by, quote, religion and what they think it requires of them because she's been critical of Islam. I mean, a, a religion, in, you know, in whose name she had to undergo mutilation of her genitals. I mean, it, it can cause some bitterness. It can cause you to abandon the religion, not to mention all the other things that she's written about and talked about so many times that have happened to her. It's just deeply wrong. And most of us would be in a puddle crying for, for most of our lives or retreating into very pu- private lives where people couldn't find us. The mere fact that she's chosen to live a public life, that you live a public life, you, the two of you, you've had kids. That's another factor. you got to layer into the worries does speak to you know both of your courage, Scottish, whatever the background. Well, it's still, I mean, it still beats being in Eastern Ukraine. I mean, it still beats what so many people around the world have to contend with. And uh, from that point of view, I, I, I have no, I have no complaints. And and as long as my wife is uh, healthy and uh, and and safe and and happy. And the same applies to our kids. Then, then I'm winning. I'm winning the war. Uh, oh. But I think the the important thing uh, that that's worth sharing is just the kind of uh, damage that that is done, which is generally speaking not seen. I think people who who aren't directly affected by this kind of threat underestimate the psychological consequences of it because they kind of assume that oh you get used to security and you get used to uh you know coming in through the the back way rather than the front way when you give a speech you get used to all of that and i think you do get used to all of that in fact to to a certain degree it becomes slightly second nature but but you don't get used to the psychological uh effects of the threat and that's the thing that i've come to learn and it's it's made me much more appreciative megan of of mental health about which I thought very little. Again, not the not so sunny side of of a Scottish upbringing is the mentality that you you never admit to weakness, you never admit to depression, you never admit to any mental health problem, and if there's a problem, you kind of work your way out of it. And I think that attitude isn't really the right one. I've become much more aware of of, of mental ill health as a problem throughout our nation and indeed throughout the world. And I'm mm-hmm. I'm much more understanding than than I used to be when as a young man I dismissed all that kind of thing as, you know, just a sign of weakness. I'm 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 a I'm a wiser person thanks to Ayan. Experts say that China is hoarding a massive amount of food. They will soon have over two thirds of the globe's corn reserves, over half of its rice and over half of its wheat. But when asked about it, China misleads. One China expert says they, of course, would never admit to something like that. Well, what does China know that we do not? When it comes to global food shortages, China may be the canary in the coal mine. 
You see, China's the world's number one food importer. They rely on the rest of the world to keep their people fed, so they cannot afford to mess it up, or there could be civil unrest, or worse. That's why it's a smart idea to stock up on a kit of the best-selling Four Patriots survival food. Create your own stockpile of the best-selling Four Patriots survival food kits. Hand-packed in the USA, the kits are compact and stack easily. They have different delicious breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. And their five-star reviews on the website rave about the flavor and the taste. Right now, you can get 10% off your first purchase of Four Patriots Survival Food by typing in the code MK at checkout. Just go to four, the numeral four, patriots.com. Use that code MK to get 10% off your first purchase of Four Patriots Survival Food. Fourpatriots.com. Use code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.